Looking to unlock something big? Welcome to the world of robotics. I am Rick and I'm going to teach you robotics. For example, we use motors in robot arms to move the arm to the selected location. In our robot, the motor will be used to drive the wheels of the robot, so the robot can move around. However, adding a motor to the robot is not something straightforward, and several parts need to be covered. Just wait a minute. If you like what you have been seeing so far in this video, please give us a like and subscribe. This is the best way that you can support and allow us to create this kind of content. And now let's go back to the video. Okay, so first we need a motor. There are different types of motors for wheels. Brushless motors, stepper motors. But in this case, we are using a DC motor to which we are attaching a wheel. To build this robot, we need two motors with wheels. And the next step is to provide electricity to the motor so it can move. So for that, we need to add a battery. When the motor is connected to the battery, it starts to spin. But we usually do not connect the motor directly to the battery because this setup doesn't allow us to change the speed or direction of the motor. How do we get more or less speed into the motor? Or how do we change the direction of rotation? By providing different levels of voltage to the motor. Since a regular battery cannot provide different voltage levels, let me show you what I mean by using a power supply. Here I'm connecting the motor to a power supply and changing the voltage levels using the dials. So we can see how the speed changes with the changes in the voltage levels. If we provide a large voltage value, the motor will move fast. If we provide a small voltage value, the motor will move slow. And then if we provide a negative voltage value, the motor will move backwards. But we cannot include a power supply inside the robot. So, how are we going to control the motor speed if we cannot use it? Then for that, we'll need to add some extra electronic systems inside the robot that will allow us to control the speed of the motors. First thing to add is the motor controller. The motor controller is used to provide a velocity command to the motor. The velocity commands are sent by the motor controller in PWM format. The PWM is a signal composed of pulses, and the pulses width indicate the amount of speed the motor will get. The wider the pulse, the faster the motor will rotate. The motor has a sensor called the encoder. The encoder measures how fast the motor is spinning. The thing works as follows. The motor controller reads this signal from the encoder to check the motor's speed and then adjusts the PWM signal to make the motor reach the desired speed. However, the signal provided by the motor controller is very small and the motor cannot use it in order to spin. So we need to amplify this signal to higher values. And for that, what we need is to add the motor driver. The motor driver is an amplifier. It gets a low value signal from the motor controller and converts it into a big value signal that can move the motor. The motor driver uses the battery to amplify the control signal from the motor controller. The result is a PWM signal that can move the motor. But who decides? which velocity to send to the motors. That is the AI of the robot. The AI is the intelligence of the robot that is executed in the computer of the robot. That computer can be something as simple as a Raspberry Pi or a Jetson Nano, also something more complex like an RDK X5, or even it could be a whole computer. So imagine that we have a program in the robot that makes it avoid obstacles. That program will be executed in the computer of the robot 
and then compute the proper velocities that need to be sent to the motor so the robot can avoid the obstacle. The flow works as follows. The AI program executed in the brain decides which is the best next speed for the wheels to avoid the obstacle. Then it sends the speed value to the motor control board. The motor control board converts the speed value into the equivalent PWM signal and sends it to the motor driver. The motor driver modifies the PWM signal to the proper level for the motor and sends it to the motor. Then the motor motor spins and the encoder notifies to the motor controller about the current motor speed and the whole process repeats. So now you know how to control motors. On the next class we are going to build all these control systems for the motors of our robot. So you better prepare all the materials in advance than the homework for this video. Buy the following materials and get them ready for the next class. You need to buy two motors with encoders and wheels, one motor controller, one motor driver, one battery and a package also to charge the battery. And you will also need a USB serial cable and some extra small cables. I will put a list on the video description with all those materials and also will include the links to Amazon where you can buy them. And the question for today, which one do you think is the best CPU for our robot? Could it be the Raspberry Pi, the Jetson Origin, the RDK or any other? Please let me know your opinion on the comments below. That's all for today. Remember to do your homework and answer the question. But the journey doesn't stop here. Check the next video where we are going to be building the control system for the motors by using the materials that we have bought today. See you on the next video.